Hello again. We'll be working on the coding portion of example 1.17. Uh, to start, we have a few important packages. We have NumPy for scientific uh, numerical solutions and problems, and we have a sci fi for um, our Maxwell Stefan differential equation for independent variable problem and root solver, as well as Plotly to plot the um, molar fraction composition graph from the bottom uh, interface between liquid and gas to the um, top of the tube. Uh, we also have some given information. Um, the diffusion constants, which were given in millimeters per second, millimeters squared per second. Uh, we've made that meter squared, which we're using a constant meter throughout the problem to make it easier. Uh, then we have our pressure, pressure in pascals given and our temperature in Kelvin given, as well as a ideal gas constant, um, which is in joules per mole Kelvin. And then we have our uh, concentration, which we found from the scaling portion of the uh, 1.17 um, pressure divided by the gas constant times temperature in joules per mole Kelvin. Not just from that's the constant per mole per meter cubed, and then we have our delta, which is given in meters, uh, and then we have our initial values for mole fractions of acetone and methanol, and our air can be found from subtracting two from one, and then we have our initial guesses of molar flux for acetone and methanol, which we found from the scaling problem portion of the problem before, 10 to the negative third, and moles per meter squared, moles per meter squared per, per second. And then we're gonna use um, what we call just the F variable for the bottom portion of the Maxwell-Stefan uh, equation, which was concentration times the uh, which it relates to the diffusion coefficient, so the concentration times the diffusion coefficient divided by delta. So first, we're going to open up a new cell, and we're going to look at defining our maxwell stefan equation. So we're going to define it as uh, dy for the derivative of the mole fraction. We give that eta, not e, eta, and then y as its variables, since we scaled the eta, and y is the other, for mole fraction. And then we're going to, oh, before that, I want to set our n values, or molar flux values, equal to the guesses for each one, respectively. Go back. And we're going to set our y into an array. So for acetone, it's going to go on the first slot of the array, which is 0 for Google Collaboratory. And then for the second slot, for methanol, we're going to put that into 1 or the second slot. Put it in there. And then, as I said before, for air, you have the 1 minus the other two mole fractions. And the problem. Okay. After that, we're going to use we're going to use um, no, yeah return, uh, and we're going to use our numpy, which we called in as np at the beginning. So we'll go back, look real quick. You can see np, and we're going to use the array portion of that for our equation. So put those in brackets. For the first one we're going to use with uh, for the acetone, we're going to have the mole fraction of the acetone times the molar flux of the methanol minus the opposite mole fraction of methanol times molar flux of acetone divided by, we'll put that in parentheses first, 
So if it works properly, we're going to use the bottom portion or the F with one, two. Then we're going to use the other portion, minus. We have to remember that the uh, molar flux of air, N3, was equal to zero throughout the tube. So we're only going to need the portion that's just the mole fraction of um, the air times the molar flux of acetone divided again by the bottom portion for one and three in this scenario. Um, and then we're going to put a comma and we're going to put in the second uh, equation for Maxwell Stephen, Maxwell Stephen, which is for the molar fraction of methanol. So we have the mole fraction of methanol times the molar flux of acetone minus and the molar fraction of acetone times the molar flux of ethanol, methanol. Um, then again, put that the bottom portion of 1 and 2. And then again, subtract that, remembering that the molar flux of air is 0, so you only need the mole fraction of air times the molar flux of methanol with the respect to 2 and 3. Again, we forgot the parentheses on the first portion. Make sure to add that. And then we're going to use a solve IVP from above. We're going to set that equal to res. Now solve underscore IVP, which was from the sci fi package. So we're going to put a parenthesis in. It's going to help us fill out what we need. So first, it says fun for function. So we're going to put in our derivative of our molar fraction for that. And then for the next part, we have our time span. But in our case, we have our position span, which is Z. Or in this case, we changed it to eta. So we have 0 to 1 from the bottom interface section to the top of the two. For the second portion, we have uh, for the next portion, not the second portion, we have the initial values, which were given. So we have put those in as y1i for the molar fraction and y2i. And then next, um, you can put in the method I'm going to, since I'm going to use a different one. If not, it'll give you the given one shown at the top, the RK45. Radu. Again, either one, personal preference, doesn't matter. It'll pull one in for you. And then lastly, we're going to skip over the T val and events and just put dense outputs in and put that to true. With a capital T. And then we're going to take that. We're going to look. I'm going to copy it. Put that on a new cell and run it and see if we get what we're looking for. Okay, we can see down here in the Y section that we have a negative when the molar fractions should be zero at the end. And so they can't be negative since at the top of the tube that you have the molar flux of air is one across the whole section because it is constantly flowing above. So we want we want that to be zero. Now to do that, we're gonna run a similar thing. We're gonna find a new function for n which we'll just call f. And we're going to have to indent everything with that. And then here, we're going to want to put a return. And we're going to call, we're going to return the res. And we want the solution at 1, which is with eta at the top of the tube. Now, before we can see if that worked out, we're going to want to use the root solver with our given initial values. Oop, we're going to want to change our n to an array like we did with y first before we do that. Again, 0 being with acetone and 1 being with methanol. 
So then we're going to put in a new section for our root solver portion. So we want res or result dot an inch. We're going to put that, we're going to set that equal to root. And then we can see our function. In this case, it's not dy, it's df. And then we have our initial values, which in this case, we're going to use our guesses for the molar flux and 1i and n 2i. And then we're going to want one and we're going to want our molar flux to equal something. So we're going to put that equal to the res and the x portion of the result we got earlier into that. And we're going to set it again, not parentheses because it's an array, brackets, zero for acetone and one for methanol. And then with that, you can just take the this portion again, copy it, put that below, make sure it's indented correctly. See, one too far. Okay, so we're going to run all of them again to check one more time. Make sure that I didn't screw up, which I might have. What did I do? There's a mismatch between outputs. So I copied that over. That x is 0, 1, and 1 result root. Oh, a mismatch. What is mismatch? No, we want to line that up there. You have to zero and one brackets. Uh, parentheses root function f. Did I call that f or did I mess that up? Oh, it's f. Result. I think there's an issue with the indentation on this portion up here. Try that again. Nope. Still getting something. Solve it. P. But that portion, that portion. Meth. I can't spell method. That would help as well. And that's output, not outputs. My grammar is going to kill us. Okay. Try that one more time. Got through. Okay. So we can see this time we're getting better values. So now that that's dealt with, I can do my grammar. I'm going to work on um, plotting. I'm going to use, I'm going to call it eta plot. So then we scaled it to eta. And we're going to use numpy again. This time not array, but lin space. Um, and then we have to give it a start, a stop, and a how many times we repeat, or how many integrations there are. So zero to one, just like before. This time, however, um, we're gonna do 50, but you need to do 51 or else you will not get the uh, final value if you start at zero. So set that, and then we need to set a variable to help with our plotting, which will be for our Y portion of our graph, which we'll call solution. Um, to set that equal to res solution portion, not x this time, and you're going to put in the eta plot. 
run that real quick, make sure that checks out. Okay. For the next portion, when we'll be working on graph, um, we're going to call it a figure or just fig. Um, we're going to set that equal and make that a subplot. Subplots. Is there an S? I think there's an S. If there's not, um, we'll fix that later. Set rows equal to one and columns equal to one. And then we can use that fig um, and add a trace. We'll start with the acetone, but we'll need to make it graph objects, which we'll take a look right back at real quick, which was pulled in up here and the make subplots as well from the plotly. Okay. Go dot we'll do it scatter. Oop. And then we're gonna have to put in our X and Y. So our X is equal to our data plot. And you can also make this um, the X variable we're having it go from 0 to 1 with eta, but you could also make it um, by delta distance, as is all you have to do is multiply the eta plot by delta for each of these. But we're not going to do that. We're going to stick to our 0 to 1 scale. And then for our y value, we're going to set that equal to the solution with the array 0 for acetone, 1 for methanol, and then we're going to do one minus the other portions for air. So we have that. And then lastly, we're going to want to name. So our graph is labeled. Name it acetone. Now we're pretty much going to do the same thing. So we're just going to copy this twice. But we're going to change a couple things. First, make sure the name is different. We don't got three different. We don't have three acetones. We have a methanol. And we have an air. Secondly, the X portion is going to stay the same, but the Y portion is going to be different. One for methanol, like I said before. And for this one, we're going to have one minus both the other portions. So solution for one and zero, or zero and one. And if I run it, it should give us a graph. As you can see, as we talked about before, we have all lines labeled. Um, this portion we have uh, our mole fractions, and then we have our eta. And as you can see, as we move down the eta line and towards one, we slowly lose more and diffuse more acetone and methanol from the initial values to get to zero at the finish for that, and one for air at the final eta since the air is running over the top and we know we only have air there so that should be everything thank you